So I'm here with Rob Arteaga, marriage counselor. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm really excited about doing this podcast. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so, for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you do, who you are, how you got started in this. Sure. Uh, um, I am a marriage counselor here in the Houston area. I've been practicing for over 10 years. I started off in the schools, but I have had my private practice since about 2010, and I've been specializing in couples since about 2013. Um, so I first got into counseling just because it was, it was, I always knew that I wanted to work in, in some kind of a way with psychology. And when I started uh, working and to get our license, we have to have like so many hours of, of, um, of practice time. And so uh, when I was doing that, I, I decided that I wanted to figure out what I'm gonna specialize in. And uh, at first I didn't like working with couples because what I would, what happened is uh, I was in uh, the offices where other counselors would work and I would hear like World War III is going on behind the closed doors. And I hated those World War Threes. And so what, uh, what I decided to do is, uh, is when I kept getting these calls and I wanted to work in my own practice, I told myself I can't keep um, referring out these, these uh, clients. So I decided to get some training to work with couples. And, and right now I find it very fulfilling because it can be very complicated. But because it's complicated and seeing the changes, uh, that's what makes it nice and, and satisfying. Yeah, that's awesome. Talking about complicated. Uh, <laughs> let's jump into our first question. So sure. talk to us a little bit about gender roles. I feel like maybe now in society, there's a lot of maybe radical feminists and they're starting to look down at, you know, the fact that men and women are different. A lot of people are starting to say that we're not different, that we're the same. What's your take on that? Well, I think that it's a matter of, uh, part of it's a matter of preference and part of it's a, a matter of values. I think that there is still a place for traditional uh, roles uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a relationship. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, with like a lot of the feminism stuff that has been, uh, that has been going on for the past few years, I think that it gets kind of harder to, to define what role are we playing whenever we give the woman more of that respect and more of that place when for guys uh, for many years we kind of took advantage of our of our power in the relationship and so for me i think that it is important for example that uh, a man have confidence in the relationship because usually when a guy doesn't have confidence it, it's it's it doesn't do much for attraction in the relationship and so uh, it, it, we have to balance that out because with women wanting to take lead roles, it it, uh, it turns into clashes of power that can happen in a relationship. And so it all comes down to me for respect, uh, mutual respect and listening to each other. One of the main goals that I have with the couples that I work with is to be listened to and to be understood. And sometimes that can be pretty complicated, but in the long term, that's, that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, that's good. And I know that a lot of people like right now in our work environment, a lot of us are leaders in what we do. You know, I've held like leadership positions uh, for a while and I think that's great. But do you think it's a little bit different when it comes to a relationship? Yes, I would say that overall, uh, I, I noticed that in, in different types of relationships, the man or the woman might take some of that lead role. And so, to me, it's a matter of being able to listen to each other to see what it is that we're comfortable with. And, and some of the differences between men and women that I could that I could talk about is, for example, in a relationship for a woman, it's it's way more important to feel loved. And in a man, the way that he works emotionally, it's more important for him to feel respected than to feel loved. And so if you have a, a situation where the woman has had uh, lead roles in, in, in other aspects of her life, I would say that it's important to kind of find somebody or, or know how to make that person feel respected, even though they may not be like the, as assertive as the other person. Uh, I think that that would be one of the key things that I would work with somebody that is is uh, feminine, the, that is the lead role in other aspects or the leader in other aspects of her life, make sure that that husband is feeling respected as her partner. 
Okay. And then how do you feel about 50-50 relationships? What I tell couples is that it's never 50-50. <laughs> what, the way that I see it is there's going to be times where the, the workload is going to be way more on the woman and there's going to be times where it's going to be the man that has way more workload than, than, than the woman. And so uh, to me, it's a matter of um, doing what's right for the relationship. And doing what's right in the relationship means that sometimes I'm going to have to be carrying that 75% load. Or uh, another way to put it is uh, I tell couples, you as a woman are going to have stresses and responsibilities that the man will never have. And the man is going to have responsibilities and stressors that you will never have. And so for that reason, the, the workload is hardly ever 50-50. Yeah, I was... Uh... It's just crazy to me. So how it, this all started was because I shared a caption that someone had posted, right? And the lady was saying that um, when you're dating, you should always let the men pay. That, you know, you should never try to pay for anything yourself. And she just described her situation, how she was married to this guy. And the guy had dated somebody else before her. And he had brought her, the, his ex, from a different country or asked her to come to move there for him. He never married her, never bought her, you know, like he didn't invest in her the way he invested in the current girl, the girl that was posting, right? And she was just giving advice saying, you know, like if a man loves you, he will put the effort into the relationship. He'll try to become that man for you. Even if he's not, you know, at the moment, he will like work to become that man. And I was surprised with the responses that I got because the, it was mainly female saying like, she's a gold digger. Like she's stupid. Why doesn't she get a job? Why doesn't she go and buy herself? All those things. And, and they overlooked the part where she said she had a career. She huh. just wasn't, you know, like, no lo estaba manteniendo, or she wasn't like contributing any money to the relationship. She, sure. her way of contributing was different, right? Sure. It was like making him a better man and being feminine, like being there for him, loving him, whatever. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Well, what I would say is that when it comes to money, I think that uh, that usually if the woman makes more money than the man, I think that it, it's it's hard for the woman to respect the man. And that changes the power structure or the power dynamic in the relationship. And so uh, there's some women that don't that don't care about that stuff. So it has to do with you and how much you value that part of the relationship. Because uh, there are some relationships that do work, even if the woman makes more money than the man. But I, I think overall, women like to feel protected and feel secure. And so when it comes to that, I think that the traditional role of like the man being the provider, it, it comes into, into play a factor in how a woman feels secure and, in a relationship. And part of that is financial. So overall, I would say that I would, I would normally recommend like the traditional role of the man being the provider, because normally that's what helps uh, uh, the structure of the relationship and what mo most women find uh, more attractive. It, it, and usually when these girls kind of let the guy slide by with not making themselves responsible, I would, I would tell that, that, that woman, well, he hasn't had to be responsible because you never made him be responsible. So we are simple creatures. What I tell a lot of women is as long as we have food and sex, you've covered about 75 to 85% of our needs. If you throw a compliment here and there, you've gone above and beyond most relationships. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when it comes to that, it, you have to make us work for it because if not, we won't uh, uh, value the relationship. So like those women who don't make the men work for it, who are like, I'm enough, I can do it, I don't need a man. And then they come into the relationship with that mentality, with the mentality of, I don't need a man. How, is, do you think that's low self-esteem or what do you think causes that? Well, it could be low self-esteem. It, it could be that, that, they, that they grew up that way as well, that maybe they grew up in a relationship that worked the same way. I, I think that a lot of times what happens with women in terms of failing in relationships is that women kind of 
the 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 illusion or the the desire of having a, a partner and a family is way stronger than the reality of the partner that they're with and so what what i notice is that it, it's because they have the idea of wanting that they look past the things that are wrong in the relationship and so the guy might not have a job might not be going to school but they think maybe he'll change without zero evidence that that guy might change and so that's that's kind of what i mean in terms of that the desire of having that family that relationship can be stronger than seeing the reality of things yeah that's true I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, it's very true. Yes. Um, so let me see what other questions I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've heard that, okay, so like you said, the men should work for it, right? Um, yeah. Ooh, I lost my question. It was related to that. Okay, so I've heard that the men is supposed to be more in love with the woman in a relationship. How true is that? That the man is supposed to be more in love with the relationship? I guess, or like show more effort or be more into the woman, more into the girl than the girl into the guy. How true is that? Well, I'm, I'm normally not like trying to measure how in love one is than the other. What I normally look for is the problems that come in that. So what, what does that mean? That means that usually if one is more in love with the other and the other takes advantage of that, then that turns into a relationship that's kind of based on power, not on, on, on respect and, and love and compassion. And so uh, whether it's the man or the woman, I believe that, that both should be committed in the relationship. And I'm always looking for evidence of that. So what does that mean? That means that like, for example, if the woman pays for something that I want to make sure that the man is being responsible for something else. Or if, if the woman is trying to please the man in, in X amount of way, I'm looking for the man to also wanting to put that same effort. And so to me, in that respect, I'm always looking for evidence of effort and, to, and commitment. Okay. I like that. Um, have you heard of the term like high value women in, I think it's the pygmetria pigme or something like that, mm -mm. like the pick me girl. Okay. What, and what does that refer to? So what I've heard, right? So a woman who, a high value woman is someone who uh, isn't going to go out of the way for the men. She's going to let the men do the hunting. Mm -hmm. And the other girl, the pick me girl is going to, you know, basically pick me, pick me, I'll do whatever to get your uh -huh. attention or for you to pick me. What's your take on that? Huh. Well, I think that there are the the pick me girls to me would kind of be a sign of low self-esteem. And so the low self-esteem is going to come with a guy that uh, does is not going to value her that much. So that's kind of what I mean in terms of a, of a relationship kind of based on power. It's like there are guys that will kind of spot that low self-esteem and just take advantage of that situation uh, instead of valuing the woman. And so when it comes what I what I kind of interpret as a, as a high value woman, a guy, a woman that's going to make the man value her. It, it's kind of like the more that we work for it, the, usually the more we value it. And so uh, I, I think there's something to be said about that. I think that it's it's. Uh, it's a matter of the more that you value yourself, the more that you're going to uh, value the relationship or make the man work for it. And, and that will also bring value to, to, to the relationship, how much uh, respect and, and uh, commitment there is from him. Okay. And then, uh, so going back to that uh, story, you know, I did a little rant after. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was talking about, because I've seen this a lot, like females who work, and they, you know, have a good job, they make good money, they're starting, I feel like they're starting to look down at stay at home moms or housewives and, you know, kind of acting like they're better or thinking that because they have a career, the guy is going to be, should be with them or is going to, they hold, you know, like a higher value to a man. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't think that's the case. What's your, I don't think be, just because you have a degree or you have money, your money necessarily brings something into the relationship. I think it's more of, how you treat the men? What, what's your take on that? 
Yes, I, w I agree. And I, I would say that I'm always looking for what are those values in the relationship. And so I'm looking for honesty, fidelity, respect, and, and what that means to, to each other so that they can come, kind of come to a mutual agreement on how they feel listened to and understood. Um, what I, one of the things that I tell folks is that um, it, when, if you are in a committed relationship right now, tomorrow I'm pretty sure you can go and find somebody that, that will be with you. But the person that can listen and understand you, that's, that's where the emotional connection happens, is when I can listen to somebody and understand that person now. If, if a woman that's working is kind of looking down on a, on a, on a stay-at-home mom, I would say that the stay-at-home mom values the child rearing so much that she decided to give up some of those, those, those work uh, environments or her career. I think that it's a matter of what do you value? Are you gonna value work and money more than the family relationship? I think that that's gonna have its pros and cons. For example, uh, you know, it reminds me of, a, of an NPR uh, piece that I heard a while back that said something like, that uh, that we would have more economic growth if if women were in the workplace. Well, to me, if 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 you're if you're gonna outsource child rearing, usually that that outsourcing of the child rearing is gonna come at a cost. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, I think we would have a stronger economy if we had kids that were reared by by a person that loves them and have a, a more ethical person in the economy, work in the economy. So I, I think that's, that's the way that I would kind of uh, think in terms of the value piece. The person that values work and money is not gonna value that family relationship and that's gonna have its consequences. I agree. And I personally, like, you know, if I ever have kids, I wanna stay home. I wanna raise them. I don't want everybody <laughs> teaching them anything that I don't agree with. And uh, I keep losing my train of thought where I was going with this. Oh, no, because, yes, family is very important, right? So I grew up and my dad died when I was little and then my mom remarried and it was still a broken home. And yeah. I feel like maybe a lot of women who end up in, I want to say, messed up relationships or, you know, putting up with things that they probably shouldn't or dealing with things that they shouldn't it's sometimes you think that's why they come from broken homes or just the parents not being around. Maybe the dad wasn't around. So the guy didn't have a, someone to raise him like a, like, or teach him what a man should be like. And the woman saw the mom had to step up. So now she feels like she has to go and get a job and do all these things. Do you think that's where it comes from? Well, yes, I think that usually the best way to predict the future is with the past. And so to me, a lot of the, these these uh, 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 issues that I see in therapy, when I start digging in terms of the background, we end up repeating our parents' story in some way, shape, or form. And so, uh, so a lot of people ask me, uh, can 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 people change? And so my my answer to that is, I wouldn't be doing this work if I didn't believe people can change. I think people can change, but the reality is that most people don't. And so what I could tell you after doing this for more than 10 years is that the people that make the longest changes and the longest lasting are the people that are highly motivated. And so what are examples of people that are highly motivated? Well, if, um, if I have a guy that has that, uh, been in a relationship for a long time and the woman's about to leave him, that's a guy that's highly motivated. <laughs> and so not everybody is highly motivated, but... Um, uh, it, it, people can change, but their their background matters a lot. And so I I'm all, I would always tell uh, folks that are considering a relationship is you got to use your eyes and your ears, not just your heart, to kind of figure out if this is going to be a good person or not. Because we all say the right things at the beginning, and we say that we that we're respectful and that we're faithful and that we are committed, but. It, only time and our eyes and our ears are not going to lie to us. Our heart sometimes does. And so uh, it takes about a year and a half or two to get to know somebody to, to kind of see if what they said at the beginning matches up with their behavior. That's interesting. Yes. So how do you feel about people who just get married like six months in? I see a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I see a lot of the couples that I see are, are folks that kind of tell me, this is kind of the story that, that I get a lot is, we started going out. We uh, he started to spend the night over, and and, the, and then she did too. And then we kind of just uh, kind of started living together without really talking about what kind of relationship we we want or what we're expecting. And then we just kind of you know got married because of the papers or something like that. You know, never like having the the intentional thought of of knowing what's the foundation. What do I want out of the relationship? What's working and what isn't? It's like we're kind of built that way. We're kind of built to just kind of match up with somebody and stay with them because uh, there's a lot of chemicals that start to go off in our brain that make us create that attachment. And so when we put more thought into it and talk about these things, we can figure out if this is going to be, if this is going to work or not. Okay. And what would you say are like the most important things to look for? Well, if I was talking to my daughter about what to look for in somebody, I would always uh, uh, tell them to kind of look for the way that the, that the person gets along with their parents. Uh, that's one of the big ones. I would kind of look for what, what are their goals? Do they have goals? If, if, if they coincide with what my goals are, because there's some people that are just happy to kind of go to work and, and, and go home and, and that's it. There's other people that have bigger dreams and sometimes those bigger dreams are more important. So kind of looking for those shared values. If, if honesty is important to you, make sure that person's gonna be honest. Only time will tell if you look with your eyes and your ears, if that person's gonna be honest, if they're gonna be faithful. But one of the primary ways to kind of do that is look for that, that family relationship. Is it good? Is it bad? Why is it good? Why is it bad? And how does that person, what, what responsibility are they taking for that or not? Okay, I like that. And then what advice would you have for someone like a woman with low self-esteem going into a relationship? Like, is that dangerous? Like, should they try to work on themselves first? Before. Yes, yes, of course. I think that a lot of times it, it's it's really hard to be to do therapy um, when you're not willing to kind of look at some of those parts of yourself that are hard to look at. So um, one way that I could that I can describe that is, for example, I, I tend to be like controlling and, and, and irritable at times. Am I, am I that way now? No, I'm not. I'm way less than what I was 20 years ago, but it took a lot, of, a lot for me to be able to work on that and to be able to say, hey, you know that you tend to be controlling and angry, so, and you know the way that that's, this has affected your relationships, and I know that I don't want to repeat this. So to be able to be honest with yourself about that kind of an issue or about your insecurities and work on them I would say that that it is dangerous to go into a, a relationship when you do have that low self-esteem because the main idea there, or mainly what happens emotionally, it's like the person is not okay with themselves. They don't have love and compassion for themselves, but everybody needs it. And so emotionally speaking, what happens when they get into a relationship like that, it's like they need this person to kind of stabilize themselves. And so instead of doing this work and facing their own demons, they kind of rely on this person, whether it's good or bad, to stay, be stable emotionally. So that's the dangerous part, that you never know if this person is going to be uh, loving and respectful or abusive and, and, you know, and whatnot or and unfaithful in the relationship. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of that. And I myself, I, I used to have low self-esteem and I think it really affects you and your relationship like I feel like I've grown a lot I know I still have some growing to do but I've grown a lot and yeah I was definitely a different person what I was a few years ago I yeah great. yeah I I think I, I I think I've seen you grow I've seen you grow in some of this 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 journey that you've had for yourself and I think that it has to do I would say that what I try and instill in people is that low self-esteem is kind of a core of fear Fear of what? Normally, the 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 types of of ingrained beliefs that occur are like fear of not being worthy of love or of not being lovable. Mm -hmm. And so, what I work with people in the long run is to replace this fear and to replace it with a, a core of love and compassion, mainly for themselves. Because when we can replace that love and compassion for themselves, it's easier to love and have compassion for others. Yeah, that's true. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. 
<laughs> so let me go back real quick to uh, the fem the feminine. I've heard that there is feminine and masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And a woman can have masculine energy. Yes. A woman can have feminine energy. Yes, I believe that. I've seen I've seen that. I I, I would put that uh, sometimes I get guys in here that are so sensitive that we can't get through a specific issue. And sometimes the same thing happens with, with women. It's like, uh, so we have to adjust that is, and still acknowledge the feelings, but not have those feelings to kind of debilitate them so much that we can't function. So, uh, so I can give you an example of like people with high anxiety. Sometimes people break down when they're in my office. And so uh, one of the, the exercises that I do with them is I have them like make eye contact with me and we just kind of take a few deep breaths to kind of just ground them. And when they're grounded, it's like their brain can, can reason and, and, and function better than when they're in that anxiety state. It's hard for them to kind of really reason because of, of where their brain is at whenever they have anxiety. And so uh, whenever the woman has that high uh, male energy or the, the masculine energy, what, what I am looking for is, okay, even if they have this high energy, can they be empathic? Can they be uh, nurturing? Can they listen and respect the partner? Because even if a guy is more of the feminine type, he's still going to want to be respected to feel okay in the relationship. And how would you classify what makes feminine energy feminine and what makes masculine energy masculine? How would you define the two? Well, masculine energy is kind of like a, a harder, a tougher, like t wanting to take the lead over, over things like that. Uh, and a feminine energy is somebody that kind of uh, is a little bit more sensitive, more empathic, uh, in tune with their emotions versus not in tune with their emotions. That's kind of how I would describe both. Okay. I've had that problem before. <laughs> I'm very like, I was, I was raised on tough love. So I'm a very blunt person. I say things the way I think them. I don't necessarily think about how the person's going to receive it. And that's been a problem in the past. I've been told like, oh, you know, like they, their feelings get hurt. And they're like, what you said was right. But the way you said it. You know, and that would always come back and right yeah, I, I could comment on that. I've had I had I've had folks in here that that tell me, well, uh, well, I'm an honest person, and I say things how it how it is, and and, and what I, my response to them is like, most people value honesty. Most people don't want to be uh, feel attacked, or or it's not it's it's good to be honest. It's not good to be rude. And so sometimes with those highly honest people, they can be rude about things. And so I'm always kind of thinking in terms of, of courtesy in, in the relationship. And one of the things that I do with people that have been together for many years, sometimes all I tell them is, look, all I want you to do is be more courteous. What I tell them is uh, things like, good morning, good night, please, thank you. And that's all that I want them to do. And if they haven't done it for the longest time, just having them think about being more courteous kind of softens them a little bit more to be thinking in terms of, of, uh, of pleasing each other. And so when, when uh, in a couple they are, are pleasing, they're feeding the relationship, strengthening the relationship. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that's something that I personally have, have had to work on. <laughs> <laughs> I do say, because in my head, I already went over it and over it you know and I'm like okay this now it makes sense when I'm gonna say something mm -hmm. but I don't say like all the things that I thought before to why I came to this conclusion I just say it and it, it comes out rude yes and, and so sometimes whenever I'm working with women is a part of, of a common problem with women is they don't make it clear enough to the guy what it is that they need and so uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, I can give you an example of a, of a couple that I worked with a while back where the, the issue was that the girl was having headaches and, and she kept telling the guy about, maybe I just have this headache. And, and, and he was like, well, I try to be nice. And I tell her, well, take a Tylenol or, you know, you should be, be drinking more water. But it's been three weeks that she, <laughs> what? Trying to solve the problem. Right, trying to solve the problem. And so uh, the girl just kind of doesn't feel heard. 
whenever whenever she she hears that. And so what I tell them is you have to be clear in terms of what it is that you need. And so in that particular case, I kind of called her out on it. What is it that you need from him? And she kind of looked at me like a deer in the headlights, but I kind of kept at it. And I said, you have to make it clear to him because if you don't make it clear, he can't give it to you. If you ask for a guy for A, he'll give you A. But if you ask for A thinking you want B, we will never make the connection. And so it was interesting because after I kind of called her out and she, she said, I just need to be held. And a guy can understand that. A guy, a guy normally wants to keep a woman happy. And so if, if she said to him, I just need to be held, he was more than happy to go and hold her to feel better. And so uh, that's one of the things that I like to work on with women is you got to make it clear. Think of it in terms of a behavior that I can record with a video camera on what it is that you need from him. If you need him to just listen, tell him, just listen, please. Can you just listen to me? if a guy can understand that. Yeah, I think that's another big difference between men and women. Men are very like, um, let me solve the problem or when they say something, if they say what they mean. And us, it's like, we say something, but really we're implying this. And then we right. get mad when you don't realize that we're implying. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so another question that I have. Um, I've heard that you're not supposed to fall in love with a person for who they are. You're supposed to fall in love with them for what they do for you, like with how they treat you, basically. What would you say about that? I, I would say that I would kind of classify it as the same thing. Who they are means that they're going to behave the way that they are. And so if they are respectful, faithful, committed people, they're going to behave in a faithful, committed, respectful way. And so uh, when people say to me uh, things like, well, I don't know who he is anymore. What I tell them is it's very rare for somebody to just all of a sudden change in a relationship, unless you have some kind of a personality disorder that happens, it, it, it's, it doesn't happen. And so most of us don't change. Most of us are the same as we are in the relationship in the beginning. And so what I would tell them is that you have to ask yourself if you can accept the person the way that they are. So, so for example, in a, in, a, in a couple that I remember working with a while back, they had been together for like 20 plus years. And one of the ladies' complaints was, well, he, he doesn't, he's not affectionate. And so one of my questions was, was, uh, was he ever affectionate? And the answer was no. And so I told this lady, look, if you've been in the relationship 20 plus years and he has never been affectionate, more than likely he's not going to be affectionate for the rest of y'all's lives. And so part of, of this should have been worked out in the beginning. And so because women have the idea I can change him, then they look past these things and think that he's going to change once they have kids or once they get married or once they have a house. When the reality is that, that since the beginning, he was not affectionate. And so to complain about it 20 plus years later, I think it's, it's just kind of putting more stress on herself because this, this is part of him that I would want, I would encourage her to accept. Now that's not to say that I didn't tell the man, you should be more affectionate, but I'm not gonna expect a teddy bear from a guy that's been a cold fish for 20 plus years. Right. Yeah, and I think that's actually one of the questions that was sent in um, a marriage. They've been together for years and years and he's never been affectionate and you know, it's, it's a problem. And, I guess her hope is that he'll change one day or, you know, so it's like, is it possible? Will he? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that more than likely he's not. More than likely he's not. Uh, can it change? Yes. But I would ask her, how bad do you want to change? Because he's probably going to have to be highly motivated to make a change. And so what does highly motivated mean? It could mean that they go to counseling. Uh, it could be in that something like worse, like uh, a separation, something like that to make a, a, a big, long lasting change, unless the guy is like uh, really open to it and, and, and really wanting to make a change in the relationship. And so so my, my answer would be more than likely, no, he's not going to change unless he's highly motivated. And that takes a lot for a person to be highly motivated. Yeah. So then I guess that leads to the next question. Um, how do you know when someone is truly in love with you and how do you know when it's time to let go? 
Um, the way that I would answer the first part is if only time is what can tell you if the person is committed, not really in love because we can't see love in people. If I had a, a, an instrument to measure love, uh, I would love to have that instrument, but I don't. Uh, sometimes I can see where people have feelings for each other, but just having feelings for each other doesn't mean that it's a good relationship. I think that's one of the differences that what, from when we're young to when we get older is that the older we get, I think some of us grow wiser into, into kind of figuring out, hey, I love this person, but they're not good for me. And, and that's a hard thing for young people to understand because a lot of times they think that because they're in love that they should be together when that's not the case. And so uh, I would call it, yes, you might have feelings, but a, the right question to ask is, is it a healthy love? Is it a, a love that's based on respect and on honesty and fidelity and commitment or is it based on power or like in an abusive relationship or somebody that's just wanting to be pleased but never pleasing so uh, I think that that's the right question to be asking yourself to see if you're in a good relationship is ask yourself is this a healthy relationship is this honest is this uh, committed and, and and whatnot and so to answer the question when how do I know when to let go what I, what I tell people is, that's not my decision to make. The, what I tell people is, I, I will give you the questions that you need to ask yourself to, to decide whether you're in a relationship or not. And so if you are in that relationship of 20 plus years, but the guy's not married, is not affectionate, what I would ask you, what I would tell you is, you got to ask yourself, is this the way you want to live for the rest of your life? If, it, if this thing is, is so important to you, uh, and maybe this is the only thing, but everything else is okay, I would tell you every relationship is going to have at least one bad thing about it. And so to me, it's not, it's not worth ending. But if it's not just the, the affection, but maybe there's not respect or there's not fidelity, well, okay, well, you got to make the decision. Do you want to live like this? And, and that's kind of the, the, the question to ask yourself, is this what I want out of a partner? And that's how I would decide if, if, if I want to be in a relationship or not. Okay. And then the other question was, um, how important are kids in a relationship? Very important. I think that uh, when, whenever there's kids in the picture, it kind of completely changes the way that I go about uh, the counseling. And so... To me, I value the family unit very highly. And so whenever we're in a committed relationship and, and have kids, I think that the family unit is, is, is priority one, not the individual. And that's a hard thing because I think it doesn't coincide with messages that we hear outside uh, like, well, you deserve to be happy, I hear. Mm -hmm. Follow your passions, follow your dreams. You don't need a man. Uh, things, things like that. You know, I, I think that there's some reasons, good reasons why those ideas are out there. But I think that we kind of value more of the individual than, than the family unit. And so, so what does that mean? That means that I've heard, I've heard cases where, where uh, I remember a case where there was a, a, a guy telling me that his partner was very unreasonable in, in a relationship. And, um, and, and he was, and, and he would describe that the woman was uh, unreasonable in the way that he, she would parent the child. And so he was also very unsatisfied in the relationship and thinking about getting out. And so what I would tell him is, look, I understand you want to get out, but you're telling me that this woman is, is highly unreasonable with your, with your son and you're going to leave, leave him alone with that? I mean, how, what sense does that make? I understand that you wanna be happy and that you're very unhappy in the relationship, but what I would tell you is that your happiness to me is not number one in, 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 in this kind of a situation. To me, it's the stability of the household, the stability of that child, because if you leave this child in this unstable situation, the probability of that child repeating the instability is very high. And the thing is that we never know how he's gonna repeat the instability. It could come in promiscuity. It could come in like risky behaviors like running away or trying drugs or things like that. And so 
uh, I, I would tell that kind of a person, the main message was, you got to sacrifice your happiness for the good of the, of the child. Yeah, I agree. Um, and what about how important are kids when, I guess, like when you're dating, like, and you, how you're talking about, do we want kids? Do we not want kids? Um, I think it's a deal breaker. A deal breaker? Yes. If, if one person wants kids and the other doesn't, I think it's a deal breaker because that's, that, that, that always kind of gets at the root of things is, is, if that one of them has that desire and that wish and the other doesn't, it's, it's going to conflict that at one point or another. Yeah. Do you think sometimes people get into the relationship or the marriage thinking, oh, I'll change his mind? Yep, of course. <laughs> yeah, the person who asked that um, he didn't have kids because the ex-wife didn't want kids and now that's one of his biggest regrets. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I could touch on that a little bit for younger couples out there. Yeah, and sometimes I get like uh, maybe somebody that's older that's already divorced and with kids and getting with somebody that's younger that doesn't have kids that desires to have kids and maybe this person doesn't want that responsibility. And so uh, I, I would tell them you have to really be uh, going to it with your eyes wide open because this person is being upfront with you. And if, if you don't want to accept that, it, it's, it's something important that you should think about right now. Yeah, I agree. I think it, it is a deal breaker if you can't agree on that. Right. All right. And last question. Uh, mm -hmm. This person asks, how do you work things out with someone who doesn't communicate well via phone? I'm not sure if they're doing long distance or I, I'm not sure. So someone who, how do you work things out with someone who doesn't communicate well via phone? Well, I would say you don't work it out via the phone. I think that I don't recommend trying to work things out over the phone. There, I don't understand why some couples can't understand this. When, when like uh, through text messages, they want to resolve problems. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what I tell them is in a text, you just can't hear the tone. Or sometimes we'll get very defensive people that think that they're being attacked through the text messages when in reality that, that we don't hear the tone and we might misinterpret it. And so... Mm -hmm. uh, I normally don't recommend long distance relationship because you can't see or hear that person. And so uh, if they, if it is a long distance relationship, I would, I would uh, strongly recommend like trying to figure out a way to, to live with that person. If it's in the same city, uh, it would be better than living under the same roof before they start living together to, to get to know them so that they can see their behaviors and see if it matches up to our expectations. Yeah, yeah. So you don't believe in long distance relationships? Well, uh, I, 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 what I said was I don't recommend them. So don't recommend it. Okay. I, I don't recommend them because it, it just makes everything harder. And so because it makes everything harder, like figuring out if this person is honest, if this person is committed, you just can't see that whenever you're long distance. And so uh, people will say, well, but we're, but we're, we're talking to each other all day. And so, yes, but it's not the same thing. Like once, once you're under the same roof, you can see if, 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 uh, if he doesn't pick up after himself, you can see if he pays his bills or if he doesn't pay his bills. So those are the kinds of behaviors that I want you to be looking out for that you can't see when you're long distance. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I don't recommend long distance either. <laughs> so what would you say to those couples who maybe? They might be in need of counseling, but, you know, maybe they, they don't know what to expect from going to a therapy. Maybe they've been told all their life that psychologists are bad and they, they shouldn't go to them or that they're for crazy people. What, what advice or what do you have to tell those people? <laughs> well, what I, what I tell them is, is when you have a problem with your car, you take it to a mechanic. When you have a problem medically, you go to a doctor. When there are emotions that, are, that haven't been able to be resolved, this is what we do. We, we work with people's emotions to try and get them to a, a place where they're not so emotional or more stable or more fulfilled. And so that's what I would tell them. My main goal is that you are more fulfilled emotionally, whether it's through the relationship or through your personal goals or to defeat some of those traumas that you have coming in from the past. Okay. Well, if anyone out there wants to hire you, right, they can call you. Your number is 832 five four nine zero zero eight two and i'll have that on the screen as well 
or they can visit your website at www.curandoamores.com. And you speak yes. both languages, English and Spanish. I do. I'm, I'm fully bilingual. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this. My first podcast with me. Yes, yes. Very, very happy to do it. I'm, I'm happy to come back anytime. Thank you so much. I'm sure someone will benefit from this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me and letting me share with your audience. Thank you.